ESPN's Championship Week continues with a marathon Thursday of basketball, which begins in the first Union Spectrum, a showcase game for St. Joseph's at 24 and 5, trying to pay back LaSalle for the only loss in the last 10 for a very hot Hawks team. Welcome to Championship Week, Chris Fowler. Richard Phelps and Richard Vitale. Guys, a day of opportunity and anxiety for a lot of teams in conference tournaments that are trying to either gain or solidify their NCAA berth. Teams like Alabama, Georgia, Iowa, Penn State, maybe Oklahoma State, Missouri, and tonight, Temple and Villanova from Philadelphia. St. Joe's the only team from that city that's 100% secure. And for folks who haven't seen them, Digger, tell us about this team. Uh, you got to love this team. Yeah, it was a 91-90 matchup the other day against St. Joe and LaSalle, but against UMass. They were down 16 in halftime, come back and win by 15. Their defense, their pressure, they're the most exciting team sitting next to you, Dick Vitale. You're going to love this game. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. you got to really like, certainly, the great play of their backcourt. Marvin O'Connor at 18 points. You ready for this? In 57 seconds. He was like Isaiah Thomas was in the playoffs. And Jameer Nelson, baby, is my national diaper dandy of the year. Just go to my website, DickVitaleOnline.com, and you can read my Dickie V awards. I picked them as my national diaper dandy of the year, Chris. A lot of people did, Dick. Speedy Morris uh, and LaSalle trying to pull the big upset here St. Joe's and Martelli says we never get any respect. The showcase game is coming up later on ESPN. Seton Hall and Georgetown in the Big East quarters. Penn State an important game against Michigan. Florida State and Clemson for the right to play Carolina. Syracuse and Providence at 9 Eastern and for the Mountain West Colorado State and New Mexico. But up next it's off to Philadelphia. There is the explosive Mr. O'Connor Dick talked about. St. Joe's LaSalle from Philly is coming up next on Championship Week. No one else comes close. No one else can compare. No one else can bring you entertainment like Cinemax. Exclusive Hollywood premieres. The largest variety of hit movies. Uncut and commercial free. Most movies, more variety and fewer repeats. The best, the most, the max. Cinemax, call now. Get a free connection to HBO, Cinemax, and digital for half price for three months. This is Chris Isaac. Catch my new series Monday nights at 10 sharp, 9 central, only on Showtime. All teams often paint their logo in the middle of the court. Seem like just a thing for 7-Up. <laughs> Next time I'll get started a little sooner. Hey, Alex. Hi, Michael. After you. Oh, no, after you. No, no, I insist. Thank you. Competition. Most of the time, it brings out the best in us. Hey, make you some aid. Basketball teams often paint their logo in the middle of the court. Seem like just a thing for 7-Up. Next time, I'll get started a little sooner. ESPN's presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. Championship Week presented by 7-Up brings you a city rivalry that goes back 100 years. This is the Atlantic 10 quarterfinals. And we have the number one seed, the Hawks of St. Joe's, taking on their crosstown rivals, the number eight seed, the Explorers from LaSalle. Let's take a look at the results from yesterday in the first day. LaSalle defeating Fordham. Dayton defeated Rhode Island, and it was George Washington over Duquesne. And that sets up the brackets in the quarterfinals to look like this, beginning with our matchup here this afternoon. St. Joe's taking on LaSalle. It'll be UMass against the Bonnies. Dayton will take on Temple, and we'll have on ESPN2 Xavier and George Washington a little bit later on. Hi, everybody. Dave Strader along with Tim McCormick. The first time these two teams played was 1901. Now, we don't have any video from that game, but we are going to show you some video from their most recent meeting here in 2001. May have been one of their best ever. 
clearly one of the best finishes we've seen this year. The LaSalle headliners were outstanding. In that game, they combined for 71 points. And when you have a trio of top 20 scorers on your team and you barely hang on for a one-point win, you know your opponent is pretty darn good. With all due respect to UMass, Marvin O'Connor may have been the ultimate minute man in that game. As Dick Vitale mentioned, Dave, the numbers, 18 points in the final 59 seconds. His offensive explosion was fueled by the quick strike offense. He's seen a nice collection of threes and drives to the basket. Marvin O'Connor is all A-10, and you might as well pencil him in for 20-plus right now. And as you're impressed by his numbers here, you have to remember one thing. It's his strong defense on Rasul Butler that is a must today. Speedy Morris is in his 15th year as the head coach of the LaSalle Explorer. And you take a look at his uh, starting lineup, and he's got the big two scores, of course, in uh, Butler and Thomas. But Julian Blanks, more than a point guard, has become a third option in terms of scoring. Probably their most important player because you know that Butler and Thomas are going to score. If Blanks puts up big numbers, they're very dangerous. Bill Martelli has a very balanced and explosive lineup. He also has a great six man in there, uh, Naeem Crenshaw that comes off the bench. The other reason that Blanks is important, he's matched up against the freshman of the year in the Atlantic 10. And we heard Dick Vitale talk about Jameer Nelson. Those two players are the number one and two ranked assist men in the A-10. Well, these two teams meeting in the A-10 tournament for the fourth straight year. St. Joseph has won two of the three, but everybody's still talking about that game at the end of the regular season this year, which LaSalle won 91 to 90. And yes, uh, Dick Vitale referenced Isaiah Thomas. I remember that playoff game at the Joe Lewis Arena between the Knicks and the Pistons when Bernard King and Isaiah Thomas put on a show and Marvin O'Connor certainly uh, resembled Isaiah in that game. And Jameer Nelson, we congratulated him for his uh, Rookie of the Year award. He said he wasn't even thinking about that, but he will be thinking about getting Marvin O'Connor involved early. A little payback. It's always interesting to me, partner. What happens after that, that wake-up call's been delivered? LaSalle has St. Joe's attention. One other thing I want to point out here, Tim, as we get started, they're going to have to re-jump it. LaSalle played yesterday. They didn't play late, but they did play yesterday. This is the first tournament action for, of course, St. Joe's because they got the bye. Does Speedy Morris, at least in the early going, does his club have any kind of an advantage that they got the jitters out? Well, I don't think it's an advantage. St. Joe's is a very mature team. I think that the big advantage is St. Joe's because LaSalle will clearly be tired. Also, St. Joe's has superior depth. Victor Thomas, fade away from the baseline, and he gets off quickly. The last time you and I saw LaSalle was a home game against Xavier, in which was probably their poorest performance of the year. Thomas and Butler could not get anything done, so it's a good sign for Thomas to get off quickly. And at the other end, St. Joe's comes right back, and Frank Wilkins, the senior from Cambridge, Mass, answers. The Xavier game, which you alluded to, Victor Thomas told me that was the, the real turning point for this team. Coach Morris called it an embarrassment, and since then, they played stellar ball. And Thomas... Trying to create in the lane, unable to get that one down. And Damian Reed, an outstanding rebounder for the St. Joe's team. Ramir Nelson, not just a passer, he can create his own shot as he shows right there. Boy, it says freshman, but he doesn't play like one. Jameer, to me, has an old school game. You see his flashy shoes. I, I think he's more of an old Chuck Taylor Converse shoes. You know the old canvas kind? Oh, absolutely. What do you mean do I remember? I still have those. <laughs> they don't look very good with your suit either. Marvin O'Connor trying to dump it inside. It's tipped away. And Rasul Butler has Victor Thomas with him. Three Hawks are back, but that's not an unusual fast break shot for the LaSalle Explorers. Butler unable to hit that one. And a foul as the ball was turned over. Yeah, I, um, I think it's very important that LaSalle has an efficient offense. They've got to work the clock, make St. Joe spend some time on the defensive end. Speedy Morris can't be happy with Rasul Butler's last jumper as well. Anytime you play back-to-back, -back, you've got to be realistic. These college guys are not used to the NBA back-to-back -back scenario. They've got to really try to pace themselves. Julian Blanks unable to hit his first three-point opportunity. Butler and Thomas got off very slow last night, and Blanks uh, helped out with a quick start as Bill Martelli. Trying to get his troops ready to go. You see his numbers. Second time he has been named the A-10 Coach of the Year. Congratulations to Coach Martelli for that. And on the baseline, Thomas, after hitting his first one, has missed his last two. And with Jameer Nelson, who picked up the foul, incidentally, on that last uh, exchange. 
And this ball tipped away by the Explorers. We've noticed a lot of air jump shots by LaSalle. And if you get into a head of a smart NBA player that is playing back to back, they try to get something established to the rim until their legs really get into the flow because if your legs are tired, you're gonna shoot the ball short. You see LaSalle, one for five, including that missed dunk by Thomas. Here's Damian Reed from the baseline, no good. And Rasul Butler, we talk about his offense, but he is the number two rebounder on this LaSalle team at just under seven a game. Blanks with the crossover dribble, but he lost it. Blanks is the lefty, and it looks like Nelson is going to try to force Blanks to go to his right. See him overplaying the left. Last time out, Julian Blanks came out like he had a message he wanted to send to the outstanding freshman. Kept him out of the lane, really limited Nelson. It's going to be a, a matchup to enjoy. Damian Reed, ill-advised pass, but he got a break. It came right back to him. Marvin O'Connor in the lane. Nice look inside to Reed, puts it up and does not get the finish, but he was fouled. Probably the greatest disparity, Dave, between these two teams lies in the post. Reed and Phillips and Sazanoff, each of the three has improved greatly this year. You notice the, the emphasis trying to get teammates involved. Good idea because if you get LaSalle's defense falling back into the lane, Marvin O'Connor is going to get his points later. Very unselfish St. Joe's team. 65% of their field goal have drawn assists. They, uh, they lead the conference in assists, but the last time these teams met, they only had 17 dimes on 34 baskets. That's a low percentage for them. Right. Obviously doing a lot more one-on-one -on -one stuff. Damian Reed was only able to hit one of the two free throws as Blanks kicks it out to Rasul Butler. O'Connor closed on him, and Butler got him up in the air and finished with a very tough make and draws the foul. You know, little history between Rasul Butler, Marvin O'Connor, South Philly kid, strong friendship. Butler grew up on 20th Street. O'Connor grew up on 27th, only seven blocks away. And they spent their summers playing at Chew Park. They'd spend the whole morning time going up and down, playing with their buddies. Then they got into the workout thing, lifting weights, running, trying to get in better shape at night. These guys have a great, great rivalry. You said you're not a math major. You got that seven blocks thing figured out pretty quickly. I had a calculator. Nelson to O'Connor. He wants to answer Butler, but dishes off to Phillips. Good head fake. And Phillips able to hit from the outside. How do you like the point play of Marvin O'Connor? He's a shooting guard, a big scorer that's getting everybody else involved. Anwar Wilson, number 35, on the wing against Phillip. Hands it off to Victor Thomas. Wilkins quickly closed on him. Sue Butler looking for a high screen from Bragg, who rolls. Bragg gets the pass. Down to 10 seconds on the shot clock. Butler launching a three. He had a little more time. Didn't necessarily have to uh, force that one up. We are in Philadelphia, a matchup between two Philadelphia teams and the statue of Dr. J outside the spectrum here as the fans continue to file in for a full day of Atlantic 10 action. ESPN and ESPN2, home of the Women's NCAA Championship. 1-800-COLLECT presents Ava save -a -Lot. Nice 540. Thanks, but my change fell out and I need to make a call. Change? Just dial 1 800 collect. That saves at least a buck or two, right? Oh, it saves a lot. I gotta remember that. Dude, it's cake. For a collect call, dial 1 800 collect. You could remember that doing a goofy footed double fakey ollie grind. Okay, I'll try. Whoa! Or maybe not. 1 800 collect. Save a buck or two. Nice wrench work, Chief. If more men would heed the call of the Y chromosome, maybe more of us would have three such faucets at our fingertips. Hot. Cold. And... Miller High Life. Frank Johnson, 
Johnson's office. <laughs> Mr. Johnson? Post your resume now. Monster.com. You the monster. Back in Philadelphia, enjoying some of the offensive expertise. Now, notice the three perimeter guys. What they're going to try to do is set a screen roll. You take the ball over there. Now, watch the screen down, trying to get Marvin O'Connor free for the jump shot. Now, watch Anwar Wilson comes to help. Nice delivery. Up, under, you have to have containment defense because this is a very cerebral offensive team for St. Joe's. St. Joe's ranking first in uh, points per game, field goal percentage, three-point field goals made nearly eight per game, and also, as we pointed out, in assists. And St. Joe's uh, showing why they're the leading field goal team, shooting 60% here in the early going in this contest. It's just a two-point lead, however. Marvin O'Connor had it knocked away. Victor Thomas has Julian Blanks going to the basket, but Thomas goes all the way. Second time he's gotten it to the rim and failed the finish. And all the way at the other end, Marvin O'Connor with the easy two. That is just the kind of exchange that LaSalle cannot afford. And Marvin O'Connor comes up limping a little bit. Worth revisiting. We've seen two missed dunks for LaSalle. The guys say that they're fresh, they're pumped about this game, but the mind and the legs are not talking to each other. Those legs are tired, and you've got to go strong. Looks like a, possibly a bruise. Yeah, it was hurt on that, uh, on the turnover. He was able to finish and make the, the basket. And Victor Thomas said, I asked him about his legs. He said, yeah, I think they'll be tired by Sunday night. Mm, maybe optimistic thinking, but you like the mindset. Absolutely. Thomas being chased out with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Now Wilson into the post to Bragg, creates some space, little jump hook, and he gets it to go. Garrett Bragg, who averages about six points a game. If they can get some production on the inside from him, be a huge boost. Interesting note from Marvin O'Connor for St. Joe's. He said, you know, we know that Thomas can score in Butler. I want to see Bragg and some of those big guys if they can hurt us. So far, Bragg has. Oh, great dish inside. Reed to Phillips. And as we just showed you, every starter for St. Joe's has scored already. Blank's working against Jameer Nelson. Nelson, an outstanding defender as well. Here is Thomas. Getting it back now from Wilson. On the baseline, Blanks is open, hits the shot. There was some penetration there, created the open man on the baseline, and Julian Blanks able to hit the mid-range jumper from the baseline. Dave, this is not the same LaSalle team we saw a week ago. They've come a long way. Notice on the, the dribble drive, if you have a team that's unselfish, what that does, it creates the incentive for everybody else to try to get open. If you work and get yourself free, you know the delivery's coming. That foul against Garrett Bragg was his second. And I think that's going to lead to uh, Garrett Bragg taking a break here. As James Jordan comes in, but oh, he is coming in for, uh, oh, now there's some discussion. They're not sure who he's coming in for. Anwar Wilson's going to go to the bench. You see Wilkins comes out for Bill Martelli. And Naeem Crenshaw, the Atlantic 10's sixth man of the year, is in there. And Reed able to complete the three-point play in St. Joe's with the four-point lead. Big challenge for LaSalle is in the back of their mind, that they know that if they get beat, they're probably going to be playing at the IM building tomorrow. So. Might as well do some work and keep playing in the tournament. It's not like they're going to stop playing basketball tomorrow. It's just where they're going to be. That was vintage Rasul Butler creating his mid-range shot, and here is Reed, and he hits the two. I said he completed a three-point play, hit the two free throws last time down, and makes the jumper there. So Damian Reed getting involved in the offense. Offensively, a flex offense by LaSalle. 
basically a very structured motion game. Nice little give and go there and all the way to the basket. That time Thomas with the finish and he was fouled. Little post entry a la Shaquille O'Neal dumping it to Kobe Bryant going to the basket. I bet Bragg hasn't been compared to Shaquille O'Neal before, but that was a beautiful delivery, and he's going to go sit down after providing some nice work for Speedy Morris. Victor Thomas at the line. Very exciting player. Third leading scorer in the A-10. How often do you get a matchup where you have the top three scorers in your conference in one game? Of course, led by Rasul Butler of the Explorers, and Marvin O'Connor, the number two scorer in the league, followed by Thomas. Probably no surprise, the top two dish men in Nelson and Blank. Naeem Crenshaw from the corner, unable to hit. He was a big factor in that comeback against UMass, the digger referred to at the top of the show. When St. Joe's was down by as many as 19 in the first half and won it going away, Crenshaw was just outstanding. Amir Nelson wide open for three, and that just hit off the side iron. And the Explorers back on the attack. Down by just two. Thomas puts it on the floor. Unable to finish, James Jordan. He was calling for it to be LaSalle Ball, but the play wasn't done. If he's gonna make that play, he needs a whistle. Marvin O'Connor pulls up for the three, and that hit off the side iron. Dave, a strong quality effort at both ends of the court starting the game. You notice the veteran leadership bringing the ball up the court. You want to try to rest your guys. This is going to be a 40-minute effort. Julian Blanks is experienced. Boy, Julian Blanks just made a smart move. Amir Nelson wanted a foul, but... It's Nelson that's going to be called for the foul, and that's his second. Blanks made a smart move. There was a very brief opening, and he got to the inside and drew him a foul on the A-10, Rookie of the Year. If a car company puts a little sports car in everything it builds, imagine what happens when it builds a sports car. Zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. Yeah, zoom, 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 zoom. Introducing the new Mazda Miata. Six speeds, VVT engine, even more fun. Yeah, 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 zoom. The company that reinvented the Roadster keeps reinventing the Roadster. Back in those days, we had no money for games. The only game we had was kick the kid with one shoe. That's why I fancied Lycos Gamesville. It's all free, there's prize money galore. Now I'm the one that's kicking butt. Whatever you're into, dig into it deeper on Lycos. Basketball teams often paint their logo in the middle of the court. Seemed like just the thing for 7-Up. Next time, I'll get started a little sooner. Joe's with the 15-13 lead, uh, lead rather here championship week presented by 7-Up. Atlantic 10 quarterfinal action. More action coming your way later on today. In fact, following us, the AT&T Big East Championship quarterfinals as Seton Hall takes on Georgetown. How about Seton Hall with 12 blocks in their victory over St. John's yesterday? Later on tonight on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, it'll be Pittsburgh taking on Notre Dame. And that'll be followed on ESPN at 9 Eastern as Syracuse takes on number two seed Providence. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Conference championship just as wide open in the Big East as it he is here in the A-10. We have no idea who the favorites are. A lot of people like St. Joe's, but there's a lot of teams in this conference capable of upsetting them. Thomas on the inside, and he draws the contact as Alexander Sazanov, the 7-1 sophomore from Moscow, into the ballgame. 
As you look at the game keys for St. Joe's, we always get a chance to talk to the head coaches. They give us their perspective. But there's Phil Martelli Jr. His dad is the bench boss. Wants to be a head coach someday. What a nice honor for him to play for his dad. And I said, well, listen, young fella, if you're going to be a coach, you got to bring the game keys. And this is what he thinks. Butler and Thomas are going to score. We've got to keep their numbers down. He feels that this is a very good offensive rebounding team. And well, he certainly has a lot of respect for the LaSalle Ball Club. Kind of an interesting comment. He said he's only 19 years old, but he knows this is going to be a close game because in his lifetime, he's never seen a Philly City game that has been a blowout. All 19 years of it, right? Back when he was in the crib, doesn't remember anything. No blowouts. Phillips unable to hit the uh, open look at a three. We have a tie ball game between the Explorers and the Hawks. Again, that uh, outstanding finish they had in the meeting at the end of the regular season, the only time they played this year. Butler, a force. Speaking of forces, we're seeing it both ways from O'Connor and Butler. They're shutting each other down. Boy, O'Connor, a wild shot there. Looked like it just slipped out of his hand. Not a characteristic uh, chance there for Marvin O'Connor. Sort of evolving a couple friends that have a great friendship but a little rivalry. It looks like they're going independent a little bit right now. Rashid Quadri, number five, is in there for Speedy Morris. He has it in the corner. Looking to the low post, delivers to Thomas, gets it back. And the three-point chance rattles in and out. Rasul Butler, the offensive rebound. James Jordan, he took a step first. Yes, traveling is the call against the 6'8 senior from Liberia. Eric Woods, number 31, the senior from St. Louis, replacing uh, Marvin O'Connor, who will get a rest for Phil Martelli. Kind of an interesting matchup. You've got Moscow going up against Liberia in the post. And Sazanoff, boy, he had good position there. Muscled his way in to get the loose ball and draws the foul. And it will go against James Jordan. Sazanoff is an emerging force down low. He's long, pretty nice ball skills. He's got an active body. I, I see him down the road really being a, a strong contributor. Got to believe that Phil Martelli's goal is to get a point for every letter in this kid's name. Zazanov from Moscow likes to keep tabs on how the other uh, Russian athletes that have come over to uh, North America are doing, particularly in the National Hockey League. I told him that Pavel Burry had a goal yesterday, and he, he lit up and said, oh, I already knew that. So we know which sports center he watches. Julian Blank's out top, not a Rasul Butler. We just reached the halfway mark of the first half. Quick fake by Butler, and he can do that. He can create, beats one defender, and then when the help defense comes over, just a little creation there and floats it in. Seven points for Rasul Butler. Naeem Crenshaw lost that one, but able to chase it down. Little trend we're seeing from St. Joe's. Last two games versus Xavier and LaSalle, they've got off to slow first half starts. Well, what a play there, again by Jameer Nelson. Able to spot Crenshaw open. Naeem Crenshaw hits uh, about 40% from behind the arc. James Jordan sets the screen for Blanks. Julian Blanks has it on, flashes out on him. Blanks dropped the ball. Back comes Jameer Nelson. Lots an opening, takes it all the way, gives it off to the trailer coming. Phillips lays it up, no good, but a blocking foul. Phillips shaken up on the play as James Jordan did not have his feet set. We're at the first Union Spectrum. Championship week presented by 7-Up. This is the Atlantic 10 quarterfinals. Dave Strader along with Tim McCormick. As the St. Joe's Hawks, the number one seed in the A-10. and Taking on their crosstown rivals, the LaSalle Explorers, the number eight seed. LaSalle getting here by virtue of their 86-67 win over Fordham last night. And interestingly, there was a 19-point difference in that game. Tim and all 19 points came at the free throw line where they made 29 compared to only 10 for the Fordham Ram. 
But it's St. Joe's getting to the line here early, uh, Phil Martelli. They have hit six out of seven, and Bill Phillips, one of the more unheralded players in the A-10. Very difficult to account for him because he scores in so many ways and he's gonna go take a seat. Look like he may have a little Charlie horse. Well, look at me diagnosing the injuries. I called a bruise and a Charlie horse so far. Five point lead is the biggest for the Hawks. Set play here for LaSalle. Butler being played by Crenshaw into the lane, and Butler wanted to pass that ball to Wilson. It hit high up off the backboard, and Sazanoff comes away with it. Nice luxury item once your top scorer, O'Connor, goes out. Niam Crenshaw is now the, the featured scorer. Nelson, no look pass inside to, Kren er, to Wilkins, rather. And he was fouled on the play before he could attempt the uh, shot. And it will go against Rashid Quadri. That is his first. Nelson to trigger the out of bounds play from the baseline. As I watch Nelson play, he reminds me a lot of John Stockton, the way he carries himself on the court, able to win games at both ends of the court. Tries to go in for the dunk that was partially blocked, but it still goes in. Oh, I'm not sure Stockton could do that. <laughs> and some words between uh, Eric Woods and Julian Blanks, but Bill Martelli Jr., if you're going to be a coach, you don't only provide the game keys, you got to provide support on the bench as well. Philadelphia fans are known for their passion about sports. They are known for their love of the game. They are known for their never-say-die attitude. But sometimes it's passion for the game. It goes a bit too far. Let's enjoy the game together, not destroy it. Continue to make Philadelphia the place that loves you back. Brought to you by Comcast Sportsnet. And the Greater Philadelphia Tourism Marketing Corporation. new releases comcast in demand pay-per-view the most movies always in stock every 30 minutes 24 hours a day only on comcast digital cable is only on espn classic tonight at eight there's no one close to any davis in college football the doctor said he has acute monocytic leukemia the worst kind here was this healthy Heisman Trophy winner, and suddenly the dream is over. Ernie Davis, Sports Century, the top 50 and beyond, every weeknight at 8 Eastern and Pacific, only on ESPN Classic. You can only see Sports Century by calling 1-800-CLASSIC today. Well, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Jameer Nelson both on this play. Oh. 24-17 with uh, St. Joe's leading. Mike Wilkins averaging six points and uh, just under four rebounds a game. One of the most important elements of this game if you're a LaSalle fan is who's going to be the third scorer. We mentioned that Julian Blanks is the guy that's most likely candidate. So far, he has not been a strong factor, only two points. Nice production by Butler and Thomas. They've combined for 13, but that third scorer is going to have to step up. <laughs> 13 of the 17 points. Inside Quadri had it blocked by Sazanoff. He's third in the A-10 in that department. 
at nearly two a game, but he's averaging almost three a game over the last 11. He's really picked it up. Tyrone Barley in the ball game now, number 12. As Nelson taking a rest. What a job Barley did the game we saw against UMass when he got some minutes. Who's going to score here? Both Nelson and O'Connor, the top two offensive threats, are on the bench. Barley missing. Sazanoff tried to go to the offensive glass, but Rasul Butler coming up with a rebound. This is an opportunity for LaSalle to make a little bit of a run. Here is Butler, launches the three, and well, he had his uh, body square to the basket there, but that's a long range shot early in the shot clock. Plus two defenders on him, nobody on the offensive glass. Naeem Crenshaw going one on one against Quadri all the way, couldn't get it down. Crenshaw gets it back, and a three second violation is called. Alexander Sazanoff at 7-1 is the tallest player ever to wear a St. Joe's uniform, and he uses that length to his advantage. Basketball teams often paint their logo in the middle of the court. Seemed like just a thing for 7-up. Next time I'll get started a little sooner. Hey, Tommy, there's an inspector here. Tell him I'm making a call. What's the big deal? You say to people you called at least a buck or two. Nice. Use your head. Now 1-800-CLICK. Save a buck or two. Where is it written that only a sports car can behave like a sports car? Not here. Zoom, zoom, zoom. powerful two-liter Mazda protege. Why should sports cars have all the fun? Okay, got growth and income fun for retirement. Long term. What do you think for the long term? Yeah, okay. We'll just sit tight on that. And for college. Oh, wow, that's only three years away now. Hmm, this might be a little aggressive for three years. Must have really good years. What do you think? Want a second opinion? Introducing the personal financial consultant from Quicken Riley, a Fleet Boston financial company. A championship big update from the Big East at Madison Square Garden. Quarterfinal game between Boston College, the top seed against Villanova. Troy Bell, so many times this year, makes the steal, and the lay-in Nova has the lead. Okay. All right, Chris, thanks very much right here. We've got St. Joe's with their biggest lead, seven points over LaSalle. ABC Sports, the NHL, is coming back this weekend live at 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific. Check the local listings for the game in your area. The Red Wings take on the Avalanche, one of the great rivalries in the NHL in recent years. The Rangers against the Flyers and the Sharks against the Kings. David, as we follow the numbers in this game, I really want to key on field goal percentage. St. Joe's, we know they shoot it well. They lead the conference. In the cellar in field goal percentage, around 40% is LaSalle. We know they're going to miss shots. How do they do on the offensive glass on the year? They're pretty solid, but so far, St. Joe's has allowed them only two offensive rebounds. Victor Thomas, he got a couple of buckets early and hits a tough turnaround baseline shot. To get the Explorers back to within five, eight points now for Thomas. Always a sign of good coaching. Call timeout, run a play, get the deuce. Marvin O'Connor back in the ball game. Bounce pass inside. Good job by Sazanoff to go low to get that ball. Here's Wilkins into the lane, and that is knocked away. This will be good. Rasul Butler with the easy finish. Off the good defense at the other end by Anwar Wilson. As you see these players compete, I know a lot of people nationally were surprised when LaSalle beat St. Joe's 10 days ago. But in this conference, everybody knows the rivalries. These players have played against each other in high school and on the playgrounds. 
There's no quit in either team. And Thomas with a travel. Got a little bit tied up there as he wanted to make his move against Wilkins. The ball security is very important when you play against LaSalle. You have to have an efficient offense. I like challenging the rim, but you have to know who you're going up against. Their big fella, Anwar Wilson, is one of the best shot blockers, along with Sazanoff in the A-10. You saw how that shot block almost acted as an outlet pass. O'Connor to the basket, nearly lost it, able to get it up and in over the outstretched arm of Wilson. O'Connor with just four points. He did an excellent job, as you pointed out, Tim, uh, playing more like a point guard in the early going when he didn't have his shots, he was getting his teammates involved. They need Marvin O'Connor to get some points. Quadri against the bigger Phillips trying to go all the way. Sassenhoff with another block. And last touch by the Hawks. It'll be Explorers basketball. Wow. What an offensive dilemma to go through if you're the Explorers. Yeah, you'd like to make jump shots, but they're not falling. So if you try to explore the basket, you've got Sazanoff in there saying, you know, why don't you go back to shooting that jump shot? Sazanoff uh, goes to the benches. Bill Martelli makes a quick substitution. Damian Reed back in the ball game. Now Nelson and O'Connor, Reed, Phillips, and Wilkins. Five players on the floor for the Hawks. Rasul Butler and a shot clock violation. Good job by Phil Martelli's club defensively. And it may be in part because of the dilemma you talked about for Speedy Morris's club. They're not making the shot, so they hesitate to shoot. They hesitate to go inside because they've had the last couple blocked. How about the mid-range game? Pull up before the shot blocks, but now that Sazanoff's on the bench, they may want to aggressively drive to the hole. O'Connor unable to hit the three. Back come the Explorers, down by only five against the top seed in this conference tournament, the Atlantic 10. Butler dumps it off. Hard to the basket goes Thomas, gets his own rebound around it out. How did that not go down? And a foul. This is going to be an important call. Who's this against? Oh, they called it against Reed. It, it, Jameer Nelson came out of there with a look on his face like, was that me? And that would have been his third. Oh, that is a tough call. Aggressive mindset. But I, I do like the intelligence of the play. You have to watch the substitutions. Who's in the game? Who's not? When a team's point guard sits down, all of a sudden you start to force non-ball handlers to handle the ball. When the shot blocker sits down, you have to change your mindset and start driving to the basket. Victor Thomas, part of the most prolific scoring duo in the A-10 this year, he and Butler. They're gonna get you about 40 points per game. He was able to hit one of two from the free throw line as Marvin O'Connor looks over toward the bench to find out what the coaching staff wants. Just over three and a half remaining here. In the first half as Wilkins had it knocked away and it's gonna be LaSalle basketball. Well, the officials are gonna stick with that call much to the objection of the St. Joe's bench. Bill Martelli and his son, Bill Martelli Jr., they know they're in for a tough one against their crosstown rivals. Well, what are you doing? Cleaning up in here. No, no, this, this is the backbone of our entire financial plan. Uh, uh, statement, statement, oh, top 100 mutual fund. Statement, tech, still sizzling. Oh, is it? Honey, this is from 1997. Want a little guidance? Mm -hmm. Introducing the personal financial consultant from Quicken Riley, a Fleet Boston financial company. Having fun yet? Well, we got your fun. Big time. Dave and Buster's, terrific food served wherever you please. And the adrenaline rush of over 200 state-of-the-art games in the Million Dollar Midway. High-tech simulators and interactive games. Hey, come on, we're waiting on you. Dave and Buster's. Big time fun! 
boots. They're very important. I got to walk around all day in them. They better be comfortable and they better be right. These are my feet. With Wolverine DuraShocks, comfort is a guarantee. What could be better than La Quinta's complimentary continental breakfast? About $10 cash when you check out. Look for this coupon in USA Today or at laquinta.com. And call La Quinta. You stay. We pay. St. Joe's with a four-point lead over LaSalle. And you mentioned that a third option has to come to the forefront here because you know the two big guns are going to get their points. Creative scoring for both of these guys. You feel like you're containing them, and they pull something like that to the basket. That's what they have to do, though. They have to try to get themselves challenged to the rim because they are not a great shooting team. Conversely, I think that's probably one of St. Joe's strengths. And I'd also like to see Jameer Nelson put a little bit more ball pressure on Julian Banks. Banks has to play a lot of minutes. You see the fine scoring of these guys. Got all the points. I think if they can make Banks work real hard, Blanks work real hard on offense, they don't have another option to point. Well, you see on the year, they uh, accounted for about 61% of the offense, but 18 of 22, they need somebody else. As Wilson in the lane, looking for somebody to give it off to, and Butler on the cut could not get the floating 10-footer to go down. Nelson with his two fouls, looking on the inside. Nice read there by Victor Thomas. That's like the free safety. Just kind of reading the quarterback's eyes there. He saw the pass coming and came over and picked it off. Blanks gets the high screen, hands it off now to Butler. Butler pulls up from three, rims in and out. Those are the kind of shots, though, that Rasul Butler can make. Wouldn't it be fun to be Rasul and Victor in this offense? How about freedom? Damian Reed inside. Let the defenders go by him and then laid it in for the easy two. Six point lead. Reed now with seven points. How good is this St. Joe's offense, Dave? They have 10 field goals. Of those 10, eight of them have been led directly to by an assist. Now we talk about their balance, they're unselfish. But they're working against O'Connor. Gets it into the paint. Good help defense by Wilkins. He got the block. Quadri gets it back. There is Blanks. Penetrates, dishes off to Thomas. Out to Quadri. Gets Wilkins out of the way, but couldn't hit the 15-footer. And a fresh 35 for the Explorers. Blanks into the lane, pulls up, and it drops. Count the basket, and he's fouled. I was just about to say, the Blanks has not been as aggressive offensively, and they're going to need more of that. The 7-Up Halftime Report coming up, but we've got an all-conference team with Chris Fowler, Dick Vitale, and Digger Felt in the studio. Talking about Villanova and Boston College and their matchup. Temple, are they in? It's going to depend, obviously, on what they do the next couple of days and more news involving Coach Knight. All that coming up on the 7-Up Halftime Report. Where is he going to go? we we'll have to stay tuned and check that out. Saw Blanks getting to the basket. Really stands out to me when I watched Wilkins' last block on the dribble drive by Thomas that their defense is so loaded up to stop those two that it creates a lot of opportunities if other explorers will try to explore their offense. Minute and a half to go here in the first half. And LaSalle hanging tough with the number one seed. Damian Reed ran into. Victor Thomas, but I believe the foul. No, I haven't seen the indication. I thought it was against Thomas. It is against Victor Thomas. Nice delivery. Big fella playing the role of runaway train. He's had a solid first half. Very active on the offensive end of the court. He's got three buckets. See the free throw opportunities uh, nearly even as Reed uh, is at the line. A substitution is made in Jameer Nelson and probably a smart move here by Bill Martelli. Minute and a half to go. He does not want to take a chance that Nelson picks up that third foul. Damian Reed unable to hit the free throws. This 
may be their best defensive lineup in the court. Barley, a much better defender than Jameer Nelson. Julian Blanks on the baseline finds Rashid Quadri. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Quadri against Marvin O'Connor. Pulls up for the three that was partially blocked. Butler was there for the putback and gets it down. They've done a pretty good job, St. Joe's, keeping LaSalle off the offensive boards, but on the shot block there, Butler able to pick it up and a timeout called by St. Joe's. Jameer Nelson, Tim, excuse me, is going right back in. Rebounding was a concern early in this season by St. Joe's, but they've really shored things up much better. There's a, a bad block out, but rather than that, you know, typically, you have an idea where a shot's coming off. When there's a block shot, it changes the direction. That's the reason LaSalle had success. Well, ESPN Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. If you ever wonder how your favorite athletes occupy their free time during the off days, tune in to The Life. All access pass to athletes' lives off the field or court or the ice. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. It's a good show. Watched it twice now. I'm gonna watch it a third time. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to set my VCR. 10 a.m. isn't a real good <laughs> time for me. <laughs> Prepping for games, huh? 10-4 run, absolutely. 10-4 run by LaSalle and Nelson right back in the ball game, and he tries to take it all away and lost it. Got it back. Damian Reed able to finish, and that's why Jameer Nelson came back in. So Dick Vitale picked him as the National Freshman of the Year. I like that call. Eddie Griffin, to me, does a lot of great stuff, but if you're talking about impacting a game, I like Jameer. Here's O'Connor all the way off the glass and in. And just incidental contact, no call either way. <laughs> At what point was Marvin O'Connor even going to consider passing that ball? Here is Blanks. Nice delivery inside, and Thomas lays it in. Now we go up and down the court, Philadelphia style. Jameer Nelson, what a hesitation. Dribble off the glass and count it. We had 20 seconds on the clock, and we had three baskets. Oh, that's nothing. These teams scored 30 points in a minute the last <laughs> time they played. Jameer Nelson, he sat down with a minute and a half to go in the half with the two personal fouls. But look at the hesitation. Dribble and the finish off the glass. At the half, St. Joe's leads it over LaSalle, 34-29. And now for the 7-up halftime report, let's go back to the studio. Chris Fowler, Digger Phelps, and Dick Vitale. All right, Dave, thank you very much. Yeah, you mentioned it. it took uh, St. Joe's about 15 minutes this afternoon to equal the point total O'Connor had in less than a minute the last meeting. So a very different kind of game from Saturday, Digger. Yeah, but you got to wonder, if I'm Phil Martelli and halftime, I'm going to say, guys, we just got to keep pushing and pushing. These guys are going to get tired. They played yesterday. The last 10 minutes of this game is going to be very important to see if LaSalle has any juice to still stay with St. Joe's. Well, you know, Butler and Thomas, who did a great job in our first matchup, really are playing well right now in this game to keep them close. But you know, guys, when I think of the Big Five this year, two sad, uh, two sad stories came to mind. Number one, the passing of Kenny Durrett, former LaSalle superstar. I mean, he was unbelievable, Chris. He could do it all. And also the passing of Guy Rogers, who I really cannot believe, Digger. I found out I read an article I, I I just blew my mind but Sonny Hill the fame guy from out of Philadelphia wrote about it that guy Rogers is not in the Hall of Fame and that is a disgrace that guy Rogers he was Great one fact. of the greatest players ever in the Absolutely. big five we'll talk about the big five temple is a team sitting on defense for the NCAA tournament we'll talk about the owls chances also highlights from the big east just up by 95 in New York Troy Bell and Boston College battling this afternoon highlights the scores ahead on championship week ESPN's presentation of Championship Week, presented by 7UP, is brought to you by Mazda.
Out the taste. Quiznos subs are toasted for mouth-watering taste. Try our smoked turkey sub with roasted red pepper sauce on rosemary parmesan bread. Quiznos. Oven toasted tastes better. What does the future hold? What will it look like? How will it feel? At New York Life, we are confident that whatever tomorrow brings, our values will remain steadfast. The financial strength of our products the integrity and humanity of our company. So no matter what it looks like, tomorrow, like today, New York Life will be the company you keep. My father always did his shopping after the stores were closed. Come on, come here. Come on, let's wait. Come on. Hey, where'd you get this one? Fill up a truck. Now get out of here. Come on, move it on. I love shopping on Lycos. They have brand names, product reviews, great service, and everything comes with a receipt. You got nothing! Whatever you're into, dig into it deeper on Like Us. If a car company puts a little sports car in everything it builds, imagine what happens when it builds a sports car. Zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom. Introducing the new Mazda Miata. Six speeds, VVT engine, even more fun. Yeah, 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 so much. The company that reinvented the Roadster keeps reinventing the Roadster. Pretty good battle in the A-10 as the Hawks lead the underdog explorers by five at the break down in Philadelphia. Welcome to the 7 Up Halftime Report. Well, the courtship continues for the two biggest name guys who are not coaches right now, Rick Pitino, Maney, and Louisville. And Bob Knight, could he really be headed for Lubbock, Texas? Well, there's rampant speculation at Texas Sex that James Dickey's job is in deep trouble as soon as the Red Raiders lose in that Big 12 tournament. Papers in Lubbock reporting that they've had conversations with Knight, that Gerald Myers, the AD, and David Schmidley, the president, have been courting Knight for a couple of weeks. Andy Katz on ESPN.com reporting Knight has expressed some interest. There's news reports in Indianapolis that Knight's staff is already in place for the Texas Tech job, including his son, Pat. We'll have more on this story later on this afternoon. Meanwhile, in the Big East tournament, Boston College, that veteran team, that worst to first in the regular season, trying to build on that with a Big East championship, take it on a Villanova team that they may very well need another win to secure its spot in the field of 65. Off the opening tap, Michael Bradley catches an elbow off the jump ball. It's like a hockey game where they drop the gloves after the opening faceoff. BC with the ball, Bell from the side, knocks down the triple, and the Eagles have the early six-point lead. Then Bradley shakes off the hand rule and goes into the paint, gets it done. <laughs> and from that standpoint, well, he was slow starting. He only had four points first 12 minutes because of the headbutt. Eagles in transition. Bell has been so brilliant this year. I tell you, one of the most underrated players in America is Troy Bell. He's a ptp -er. He's a superstar, baby, Mr. Bell. Bradley had big games against Boston College both times, but BC won the games by 10 and by 15. Yeah, BC's quickness, really when they need a spurt, they go to Bell, they get it done, and that's what Villanova's got to figure out the second half. Game number two in the Big East is Seton Hall against Georgetown. The Pirates beating St. John's yesterday. All of a sudden, this team that at times was accused of playing selfishly all season, had some dissension, looks very dangerous. Well, you know, they had chemistry problems. It's been documented with some of the problems they had during the course of the year. When they had that locker room brawl, it was the Georgetown game, Ty Shine and Eddie Griffin. But they played inspired yesterday. They played with a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of spirit, a lot of energy. If they play like that today, they could offset Georgetown. Georgetown beat them twice because they got great performances out of Braswell. He had 12 assists in the first game. Second game, he went for 26. 
Knicks. They have to control him. And on the inside, Michael Sweetney, a diaper dandy who was not highly rated coming out of high school, like, for example, Eddie Griffin. He's going to be probably playing at an unbelievable level, trying to show that he's in the class of Eddie Griffin. But Seton Hall could do, Digger, what Arkansas did last year in the SEC, get hot and win this tournament. But you got that intimidation factor in the two games they've played. 17 blocks by the Hoyas in the paint. That will take away the penetration by Barrett, as well as Ty Shine, who had 22 points yesterday. So it's going to come back to, can Darius Lane and company get the threes going for Seton Hall to take away the block shots? That's game two this afternoon on ESPN, the Big East quarterfinal game from the Garden. The Hoyas swept both of those regular season meetings. They were back in January. They had the big edge on the boards. And the key factor in that game, three-point shooting, Seton Hall was terrible from behind the line. The Hoyas were very good. 16 of 38 in those two games at 2 o'clock Eastern time for the right to move on in the Big East. Redemption, baby. This could be redemption for Tommy Yamaka and the Pirates. Winner of that game takes on the winner of that Nova Boston College game. We'll be back. This halftime report is presented by 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. Basketball teams often paint their logo in the middle of the court. Seemed like just the thing for 7-Up. <laughs> Next time I'll get started a little sooner. You drive the way you drive. That's just the way it is. And that's fine. Because there's a motor oil made to take it. Introducing Pennzoil Synthetic with Penzane. Penzane was developed for the space program and is used by NASA. Don't change your driving, just change your oil. Pennzoil Synthetic, don't hold back. Buy five quarts of Pennzoil on a Purolator Premium Oil Filter at Pep Boys and get three bucks back by mail. I can get um, more masking tape, more concrete, more plaster, more of these. I need more tools, more lawn, more of this, hey, more of that. Maybe I can get three more feet. I need a lot more tools. When I go to Home Depot, I can save money, nuts, and I can get more stuff. A lot more than I would have expected. That's what I'm talking about. This is why I go to Home Depot first. The Home Depot, first in home improvement. The Great White has an olfactory system that can detect a single drop of blood in the water from up to a mile away. Their jaws can crush titanium at an astonishing four tons per square centimeter. All in all, they're nature's perfect killing machine. Well, how many years have you been studying the Great White? Well, none. I don't even swim. Oh. But I did stay in a Holiday Inn Express last night. Stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. When you've seen generations of market swings, you gain a certain perspective. That perspective is reflected in Franklin tax-free mutual funds. As the country's leading tax-free fund manager, we can help you keep more of what you earn. And you know how freeing that can be. Franklin Templeton Investments. Gain perspective. Basketball teams often paint their logo in the middle of the court. Seemed like just the thing for 7-Up. <laughs> Next time, I'll get started a little sooner. About 8 billion brain cells have been burned trying to figure out who's going to be in the women's and men's field. You can find out on Selection Sunday, the Women's Selection Show, presented by State Farm at 5 o'clock with Robin Roberts and team. Our 90-minute show begins here at 6.30, between 6.30 and 8 o'clock. One of the teams perhaps sitting on the fence is Temple. They will take on Dayton in the 8-10 quarterfinals, a team they swept twice in the regular season. You know, Temple has one of the longest active streaks NCAA tournament appearances at 11. A couple of times they have slid in there with marginal seedings as a 17, 18, 19 win team. That's where they sit right now. You see against the top 50, they have those nine losses to Duke twice, Wake, Wisconsin. They lost at Villanova, which is another bubble team. John Cheney thinks sometimes you don't give the A-10 enough credit, and he wow. thinks that, the, that their team 
firmly belongs in the tournament. Well, he didn't say Dick Vitale. Now, uh, Chris, he didn't he use your said, name. He said media guys. Yeah. You can't say me because I've said from day one, it's, I think they're a lock in. My man right there, Mr. Fowler, he says they're on a bubble. I think that when you look at their schedule, they played a dynamite schedule. John Chaney plays the best. And when they lost seven games in a row, they played without Quincy Wadley. And I got to believe the committee will definitely take and scrutinize that factor. They belong in the tournament. You look at their quality of people they played, Digger. They play the best of the best. There's no way that they're on a bubble right now. We'll go back to 96, 97. They did get in as an at-large with 19 wins each season. If they win today against Dayton, that will be win number 19. I think they still have to control Sto Tony Stanley of Dayton, who didn't play well yesterday, but if he gets hot against that zone, then that's one way Dayton gives him fits. But I just love Lynn Greer. He's taken over this team. He's taken over this season. And I think if they win today, they still can get in that large from the A-10. That's scary. See, you said UConn was in. Then they have the non-effort against Syracuse. Temple better be careful. I suggest the Owls show up and play against what Dayton. What is this, Rose Dickey V night? What is this, Rose Dickey V? I mean, it's unbelievable. Just here today. You think I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I ain't working up. anymore. That's it. I'm out of here. Right. And this guy's he's roasting me, Digger. Help me out. Bail me out. The guy's roasting me here today. I get paid when they roast me. The amateur week continues tonight. Pittsburgh and Notre Dame. I know Dick will have some thoughts on Sit on Dick. It'll be okay. GW and Xavier at 9:30 Eastern time. And then the midnight though, have the Mountain West game as well. Mid-American Conference quarterfinals. Central Michigan is the top seed, getting a good battle from the eight seed Miami of Ohio right now. Yeah, you better get to the championship game because that's the only way I think the winner goes. I don't think they're going to get that large in from the Mid-American Conference this season. Too much balance in that conference. So underrated, but they all beat each other. We'll get Mr. Vitale a nice cold beverage. We'll see you after the game, the second half from Philadelphia. Won't be coffee either. <laughs> Are you okay, Nana? I just want to watch my story, but I could use a cold drink. Okay. You know one of those days when it's raining outside and you really want to watch a good old movie? Curling up with your lovey-dovey. Get some popcorn, get the family in. Now, with the satellite dish. You might have a few problems. The picture, it freezes. There's a lot of clicking. Sometimes we get static. It's a mess. And the harder it rains, the worse the picture gets. Now, call me crazy, but when the weather's bad outside, isn't that when I want to watch TV inside? Satellite TV isn't all it's dished up to be. I mean, just because it's raining. Craig Johnson's office. Hello, Craig Johnson's office. Hello. Craig Johnson's office. <laughs> Mr. Johnson? Post your resume now. Monster.com. You the monster. <laughs> This is your captain speaking. If I could have your attention for a moment, folks, I'd just like to say that American is proud to be the only airline to remove seats throughout coach, so you all can have more room to cross your legs. <laughs> However, we do kindly request that you not all do it at the same time. Thank you. Gotta be a Grand Prix driver. The Pontiac Grand Prix with wide track handling. Its wheels are set wide for better control and grip in the curves. Wider is better. Now lease a new wide track Grand Prix with a CD player and aluminum wheels for as low as $277 a month. See your Pontiac dealer today. ESPN's presentation of Championship Week, presented by 7-Up, is brought to you by the Wide Track Grand Prix by Pontiac. Wider is better. Tim McCormick in Philadelphia for five days. I would guess somewhere between eight to ten Philly cheesesteaks will be consumed at some point during his stay here. 
Seven up presenting championship week and we're at the half here on the A-10 quarterfinals and at St. Joe's the number one seed with a five point lead. Dave Strader back along with Tim McCormick and you know LaSalle did a pretty good job of keeping this game more at their pace. They did win that uh, late regular season game but it was a higher scoring game than they normally like. Yeah two reasons Dave because they played last night they have to keep their legs fresh. Also I look at St. Joe's and think this team is explosive. I'm looking for them the second half to maybe play in spurts. Now for LaSalle I was very impressed with his start by Victor Thomas. He made some very difficult shots. The combination of Thomas and Butler combined for 22. They did their job, but they need that third score. And for St. Joe's, Reed provided the manly effort inside. He was very active right around the hole. And also, you may feel like you're slowing down Marvin O'Connor, but he's able to create offense from the defensive end. I really thought it was a solid start for LaSalle, though. Take a look at the Haviland first half stats and see the St. Joe's, the top uh, field goal shooting team in the conference, shot it at 50%. But look at the numbers from three-point range. Both of these teams are capable, but a combined one for 12 from behind the arc, fairly even at the uh, free throw line as well. But points off turnovers, 11 for St. Joe's, just two for LaSalle. Worth revisiting. LaSalle, we're going to talk about this throughout the game. If you play back-to-back, -back, you can't live with jump shots. They have at times. When they've missed, they've had good success cleaning up the action on the offensive glass. I'm sure that was the point of contention by Phil Martelli at halftime. Now, you pointed out last night in the matchup uh, that we had with uh, George Washington and Duquesne that the Colonials played an aggressive offense. Do you see St. Joe's perhaps being a little more aggressive and, and testing LaSalle a little bit more here? Well, especially Marvin Conner. I, I think that that holds true with this game. Marvin O'Connor is an explosive scorer. He plays in spurts. And as this game materializes, as Digger mentioned at halftime, I agree completely. What I have to see is if St. Joe's is able to get to the 10 minute mark with a lead, I think the last 10 minutes of this game, they own it if they play in transition. Foul was against Anwar Wilson, his first. Damian Reed able to knock them both down. Blanks is the only point guard for LaSalle. You notice the slow posture bringing it up. They're very good in a half court set featuring Thomas and Butler. Whoa, you wouldn't expect that. Boy, perhaps he should have tried to take it all the way and finish, but Garrett Bragg tried to dump it off to Wilson. It was knocked away. Last touch by Wilson. <laughs> yeah, Speedy Morris thinking we need to strike this one from our offense, but you saw the defense parting like the Red Sea. Garrett Bragg at 6'11", 275 would make a defender think twice about taking that charge. Nelson thought about the three. He finds his backcourt mate, Marvin O'Connor. There's the high arcing shot that Marvin O'Connor is capable of knocking down. And suddenly it's a 10-point lead, the biggest lead of the ballgame. Thomas into the lane. Rasul Butler behind the arc, and he hits it. Boy, that was very well executed by Blanks to Thomas, and then finding Rasul Butler. Marvin O'Connor into the lane. He had it knocked away. Rasul Butler being challenged by Nelson, and Butler doing a nice job behind the back, and then dishes it to the corner. Blanks is open, unable to hit that one. And then Victor Thomas grabbing the arm of Phillips. Marvin O'Connor is a fiery competitor. He holds his follow through after the jumper for about 10 seconds. And his favorite player, the guy that he emulates, no surprise, Latrell Sprewell. If I, was, if I was going to battle, I'd want him on my squad. Mm -hmm. Here is O'Connor. Draws a little contact, then dishes off Phillips inside to Reed and Reed. We'll go to the free throw line for two. Third foul against uh, Garrett Bragg. We're going to enjoy the, the balance scoring here. The guards score with ease. The recipients of some nice ball movement are the big guys. You see the delivery by Phillips called him unheralded does a little bit of everything for this squad. He's number two in the conference in defensive rebounds. He plays the role of point forward, and that takes a lot of the pressure off Jameer Nelson, and I believe a big part of Nelson's success this year has been the assistance from the big guy, Bill Phillips. 
Rasul Butler. Back to Blank, puts it on the floor against Nelson, and Jameer Nelson just got a hand on it. Inside to Bragg, Thomas gets the pass, knocks it down, no basket, they're gonna say the foul before the shot. Each of the games that we've seen LaSalle play this year, a lot of NBA scouts enjoying the action by Victor Thomas. Boy, that's, that's a close to being a, a shooting foul. In the NBA, they're gonna oh, count that one. No question. Little jump step there by Blanks. Wilson going to the offensive glass, and he is fouled. And how close was that to being a tip dunk? He mistimed it by a split second, had plenty of elevation. Notice on the catch, he had to pull it back down, so you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and regather myself and go up and try to get it. Tip dunk? No. Wilson just a 58% free throw shooter, but knocks that one down. Mr. Intangible for this LaSalle team. He's a new starter, didn't start the whole season, brings a lot of shot blocking, interior defense, pretty solid rebounder as well. Became a starter the last nine games when James Jordan, who had been the starter in that position, was brought off the bench. Seven point advantage for the number one seed Hawks. Damian Reed looking inside, he finds Phillips. Working against Wilson. Little spin move, left-hand shot came up short, and Garrett Bragg protecting that rebound. Very important that LaSalle keep this game in single digits. Keep it close, try to get hot and win it at the end. They're not gonna knock St. Joe's out. They've gotta be very patient. Out near midcourt, now they get it to Bragg on the baseline. He kicks it back out, Blanks open for the three, and he hits it. Julian Blanks pulls the Explorers back to within four. Eight points now for the point guard, and perhaps that third scoring option to complement Butler and Thomas will again be Blanks. Harmon O'Connor gets the screen. Kicks it back out, Phillips. He's been working on that three-point shot, but can't get that one down, and gonna be a foul here on Wilkins. I think that's contact the official was gonna let go until he saw Thomas uh, really get upended. This is the third scoring option that's vital for LaSalle's success. How did you like the stat line yesterday for Blanks? Here to take a look at the foul. A Little bit of an undercut, have to call that one. Blanks just filled up the stat line. He had 23 points. He made all of his free throws seven for seven from the line, grabbed 10 boards, and had four assists. Outstanding ball game for Blanks. Here's Victor Thomas, and he hits the long two to bring LaSalle within two. And a test for the top-seeded Hawks. They have the high expectations. Wilkins off the screen, no good. And LaSalle with a chance to tie or with a three-pointer, they can take the lead. A 7-0 run for the Explorers. They run Thomas off the screen, they get him the ball in the lane, that's a good look, and he knocks it down, and we are tied at 41, and Phil Martelli said, let's talk it over. It's hard for me to imagine LaSalle only having 13 victories on the season. Now there's more championship week presented by 7-Up coming your way from right here in the first union spectrum. Tim and I will be back on ESPN2, 930 Eastern as the Colonials of George Washington off their first round victory over Duquesne will take on the number two seed Musketeers of Xavier and uh, that game could possibly tip off earlier than that 9.30 uh, Eastern time, so you'll be in front of your TV sets watching Championship Week, ESPN, ESPN2, surfing for uh, games all over the place. Oh, uh, so. yeah. And if you like your basketball fast and in transition, that's a game you're going to love. We had a chance to, to witness that firsthand in Cincinnati earlier this year. The game went into overtime. Well, the game before that game uh, that we're, we're covering between Xavier and GW was number three, Temple, 
number three seed against Dayton. We all know how important this tournament is to Temple and Dayton as well. Dayton, a club that probably has to win it. Just getting to the finals won't be enough. The two teams that uh, have a, a chance to win this thing, both capable of winning it, and they face each other later today, and that, that'll be right before our Xavier GW broadcast. Four and a half minutes gone by here in the second half. And the LaSalle Explorers on a 9-0 run. Yes, Julian Blanks has kicked in a little bit, but when they need a basket, it's either Butler or this man, Victor Thomas, that delivers. Every Thursday, it's Thursday Night College Basketball from 9 to 11 on ESPN Classic. Gotta be a Grand Prix driver. The Pontiac Grand Prix with wide track handling. Its wheels are set wide for better control and grip in the curves. Wider is better. Now lease a new wide track Grand Prix with a CD player and aluminum wheels for as low as $277 a month. See your Pontiac dealer today. Basketball teams often paint their logo in the middle of the court. Seem like just the thing for 7 Up. <laughs> Next time, I'll get started a little sooner. Nice air. Thanks, but my change fell out, and I need to make a call. Just dial 1-800-COLLECT. That saves at least a buck or two, right? Oh, it saves a lot. I gotta remember that. Whoa! 1-800-COLLECT. Save a buck or two. Credit card statements, CD, money market. Those banks. They nail us with high credit card rates and pay us nothing on our CDs. There's no escape! Don't worry. I switched everything to Capital One. Oh, no. To the neighbors! Capital One offers some of the best rates in the nation on CDs, money market accounts, and platinum cards. What's in your wallet? An update now from the Big East quarterfinal game. You know, Boston College's Troy Bell just killed Villanova 50 points in two meetings in the regular season. He's doing it again this afternoon. The steal and the punch down. 22 for Bell. BC leads by 13, guys. Uh, the most famous Temple Owl, Bill Cosby, Fat Albert's in the house. One of my all-time favorite comedians. His albums from the 1960s were some of the best. A little stand-up comedy from Victor Thomas. Game is very diversified, makes jump shots, gets to the lane at will. And what makes him so special, because of his size, he's around 6'8", he can shoot right over the top of defenders. Actually, nothing funny about that if you're a St. Joe's defender, is there? Phillips could not finish on the inside. A little offensive drought here. Everything's coming from outside or contested shots. Nelson to the... Oh, what a behind-the-back pass to Reed, and he couldn't finish. Oh, what a play by Jameer Nelson. Oh, oh. I've got to see that again. Oh, that was unbelievable. I mean, you've got to know if you're Damian Reed that that ball has a good chance of coming to you. You've got to be able to catch that pass. And a turnover by the Explorers. They couldn't take advantage. Bounce pass to O'Connor. He'll finish. <laughs> So the Explorers can't capitalize on the break that they got when Reed bobbled the spectacular feed from Jameer Nelson. Hey, I just want somebody to have a turnover and get a foul so I can see that highlight again. We've got to see that <laughs> slowed down. Anything that happens right now is immaterial to me. Now let's see what the call is here. The possession arrow is pointing to uh, LaSalle, but it is going to be a jump ball, so it'll be possession arrow. And it belongs to the cell. Let's take a look at this. Watch this play. You know, Magic Johnson used to purposely oh. hit his teammates in the head with the ball from time to time to show them, look, when I've got the ball, you better be ready because I might throw the unconventional pass. That's a left-hander behind his shoulder. Yeah, I apologize a little bit to Damian Reed because he actually did make the catch. He lost it on the way up. But, oh, wow. He threw it with the left hand behind his shoulder. Butler from way down, unable to get it to go as it hit the front rim. That was the best pass I've seen this year. 
Our championship week presented by 7-Up tonight, ESPN, 7 Eastern, ACC first round action from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, the number nine seed Clemson. Club will take on the number eight seed Florida State team. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. The ACC getting underway. Marvin O'Connor off the catch and shoot. Nelson with the long rebound. O'Connor all the way to the basket, lays it up. May have been tipped. Crenshaw with the rebound, the put back, no good. Thomas, the outlet pass now to Rashid Quadri. And the freshman from Boston gets it back out. Blank open for the three, no good. Would have given LaSalle the lead. Nice play inside by Reed. He sealed his man, and Nelson recognized that. And the maturity of a freshman point guard. He knows that Reed was frustrated because he didn't finish the great delivery. So what does he do? He goes right back to his big guy, Damian Reed, a perfect delivery. And also, this is called lock and lob. Put it up top, let your big guy go. And that's some pretty nice hands inside by Damian. Reed now with 14 points. He's hit eight of 11 from the free throw line. Make it 9 of 12, 15 points. Damian Reed leading the way. Marvin O'Connor with 11 points. You know the other Hawk in double figures? You notice the way Damian Reed came up and yelled to Jameer Nelson, watch your back, young fella, there's a pick coming. Butler on the baseline. Split the defense. Oh. Is that pretty? Marvin O'Connor looking at the officials for some help. 16 points for Rasul Butler. And who did it? The butler did it with a candlestick in the conservatory. <laughs> Marvin O'Connor outside the three-point line, rattles in and out. And Blanks will just slow it down. Again, LaSalle with a chance to tie or take the lead. Ice cream from Victor Thomas. Double team Phillips comes over to help out. What a spin move though by Butler. Did he step on the baseline? He did. Rasul Butler with a lightning quick spin move to get away from the double team. As I watch this spin move, I have a flash of Darius Miles, the fine freshman for the LA Clippers. There's his left toe right on the line. Very athletic and long. He has hopes of the next level. Clearly needs to upgrade his ball handling skills. Defense both ways, no variation. Oh, Crenshaw was going to say that was a force because Quadri was all over the shooting hand. And Crenshaw knocked it down to make it a five-point game. That's one of the reasons he's the Atlantic 10 sixth man of the year. He just makes big plays. Victor Thomas, Wilson wide open, and he hits the jumper. That's not necessarily a shot you expect to get from Anwar Wilson. When we talked to Speedy Morris before the Xavier game, he singled out Wilson and also Blanks as the two guys that he'd love to see score some points to take the pressure off of Thomas and Butler. Fazanoff who's back in the ball game. Nice low post move. And Wilson is going to be called for the foul. Like the footwork, though, of Alexander Sazanoff showing some low post moves. Notice the post entry. Number 5-1 White made the drop step to the middle. And if you're Wilson, you have to play better position defense because as a post defender, there's no help to the baseline side. If you send your big guy to the middle, then you've got your guards coming down and stripping. Good recognition by Sazanoff. Quadri will sit down as he is replaced by James Jordan. Sazanoff hitting one out of two. St. Joe's is the number one seed, but LaSalle showing no respect. They're hanging in there with 11.38 to go here in the second half.
taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. Sushi. Gotta be a Grand Prix driver. The Pontiac Grand Prix with wide track handling. Its wheels are set wide for better control and grip in the curves. Wider is better. Now lease a new wide track Grand Prix with a CD player and aluminum wheels for as low as $277 a month. See your Pontiac dealer today. I loved rock and roll when I was a kid. My stepfather hated it. With Lyco's music, I could check out what's hot in the charts. Hey, Dad, should I buy this one? <laughs> Whatever you're into, dig into it deeper on Lyco's. Oh. We are at the first Union Spectrum here in Philadelphia for an all-Philadelphia matchup between St. Joe's, number 23 in the country, the number one seed in the Atlantic 10 tournament, taking on LaSalle. Championship week presented by 7-Up. Dave Strader along with Tim McCormick and the rest of our crew. Glad you're joining us for your uh, noon hour activities on the East Coast and maybe having some breakfast with us across the rest of the country. Take a look at the points off turnovers. St. Joe's uh, doing the job. Little trap. I think this is a good idea. I would have liked to have seen it if I'm a St. Joe's fan earlier in the game trying to force the tempo and make LaSalle play quicker than they want. As I had mentioned, I look at LaSalle and think that they have done a nice job controlling the throttle. The biggest reason they've controlled the boards in this game. Now the winner of this game will play the winner of the upcoming UMass St. Bonaventure game. A rematch of a game we had in the last weekend of the regular season. Victor Thomas with the fadeaway is good. Phil Martelli has to be scared to death right now because Thomas and Butler are getting quality looks whenever they want. 17 points now for Thomas. Dazzin up on the wing. Phillips kicks it out. O'Connor open for the three, and he hits that one. Marvin O'Connor, talk about a quality look. He had time to set his sights, square his shoulders, and he's got 14 points. Thomas working against Naeem Crenshaw. Crenshaw got the ball. Look at O'Connor go to the, the floor, and it's out of bounds. Last touch by LaSalle. Well, O'Connor plays hard, doesn't he? Boy, he sure does. Counter to the baseline, and uh, that dunk will not count. He was fouled by Rasul Butler. Notice a lot of ball pressure. A little bit of a surprising call. The officials have been letting the guys get physical. A little ticky-tack variety, but probably a good bailout because if they don't well, call that yeah. foul, he gets dunked on. Well, Marvin O'Connor, we all know about his scoring, but we asked Bill Martelli, what's the biggest change you've seen in your junior guard? Well, he has had an extraordinary growth, not only in his game, but in the person that he is. And he's always been fiercely competitive, ever since I first became aware of him when he was in the 10th grade. Fiercely comp uh, competitive. He will fight you if you're flipping coins to win that flip of coins. So that's what he's done. Now, he's channeled all that energy into a positive for us this year. He has been as explosive a player, and I and I watch every game. Uh, he's as explosive a player as there is in the country. And he's been able to mature a great deal. He had some Rashid Wallace in him, very fiery, a lot of technical fouls. Same high school, Simon Gratz here in South Philly, but this year the technicals have been eliminated, and he's playing solid ball. Rasul Butler with a pull-up three. Victor Thomas battling for the ball. And he thought maybe he uh, got fouled in the act of shooting. Now, the first thing he did, he signaled a jump ball, and then he tried to talk to the referee and saying it was a shooting foul. Yeah, well, he didn't want the jump ball because the <laughs> possession there was going <laughs> yeah. the other way. He quickly pulled his yeah. hands down. 
Rasul Butler rattles in and out. Jameer Nelson with a rebound. He pushes it up the floor. Finds Naeem Crenshaw on the baseline, and he goes in and finishes. Crucial point in the game at halftime. I had mentioned the fact that with the last 10 minutes in this game is the time that I would expect LaSalle to start getting a little bit of fatigue in their game. Now you see each team with three timeouts remaining as we're just past the halfway mark of the second half. Championship week presented by 7-Up and following us will be a matchup from the AT&T Big East Championship quarterfinals. Seton Hall will take on Georgetown right here on ESPN. And later on tonight on ESPN2, more from the Big East as the number five seed Pittsburgh team will take on number 18, Notre Dame, number 18 in the country. They're the number one seed in that tournament. And that'll be followed at 9 Eastern right here on ESPN by Syracuse going up against Providence. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Troy Murphy, in my eyes, America's best player this year. Player of the year. Well, there's certainly three or four candidates, Tim, and it's going to be an interesting uh, vote. And away from the ball, Marvin O'Connor and Rasul Butler running into each other. But it's going to be Sazanoff that picks up this foul. Just like the Heisman Trophy, do you think the, the college player of the year should be the best guy on any team, or does it have to come off of what you do to help your team win? You know, it's a, it's, it's a great question, because the argument is, are you the most valuable to your team, or are you the best all-around player? I, I think it should go to the best all-around player. Blanks and Thomas wisely pulled his hand back because he realized that ball had been deflected by a St. Joe's defender. I like this for an adjustment. First time that we've seen a zone defense trying to protect against the inbounds play from LaSalle. Butler putting it on the floor. Gets O'Connor off his feet. Rasul Butler. Very similar move to the one he made to score against O'Connor on a three-point play back in the first half. He now has 18. Not sure how you stop that. Rasul Butler likes to go to his left, so they forced him to his right. Still scored. Marvin O'Connor, he wants to shoot over the top, and just a bit short there, and it goes over the plane of the backboard. So maybe a case there of Marvin wanting to get a little personal revenge and not taking the shot that was uh, the best for his team at that point. A little bit of a run by Phil Martelli's squad, but LaSalle hanging in there. They're down by only six. Still a lot of time on the clock. Offensively high screen and roll. Butler, three-pointer. Boy, he looked good on that one, but could not get it to go. Nelson to the basket, and a foul here against Julian Blanks. Dave, when we worked the LaSalle Xavier game, one of the, the things that I learned about the Explorers, they seem like their defense is impatient. If you have poise, if you take 25 to 30 seconds to really make them defend, looks like you can get any shot you want. A quick shot versus LaSalle plays right into their athleticism and being able to play in transition. Nelson very calm at the line. And again, unlike a freshman, this uh, this point guard for St. Joe's is the guy you want on the line when the game's on the line. He hit a couple of free throws with five seconds left and a win over St. Bonaventure. And anybody that doesn't know about the impact of Nelson, all you have to know is last year they were 13 and 16. This year, 23 and five. Butler, he wants it and he gets it, Rasul Butler. Is feeling it offensively. Now with 20 points. You know what that was? That was NBA right there. That's an NBA play. Here's O'Connor trying to go right back at him. Had it stripped away. Rashid Quadri. He finds Butler inside. Drew the contact against Sazanoff and then finished. 
Rasul Butler. Single-handedly leading this Explorer team and keeping them in the ball game against the favored number one seed from St. Joe's. There's Butler doing his best NBA imitation, pro move. Don't forget, that's over seven foot one with an outstretched hand. He has 22 points. He's got 20 shots to get those. Not the, not the most efficient offense we've seen, but it's been very, very good defense on him. Well, Sunday is a very big day for teams all over the country. And at 6.30 Eastern time, we will have the men's tournament selection special. Chris Fowler will host a 90-minute program. Dick Vitale, Digger Phelps, and Jay Billis will all be there. Mike Tirico reporting live from Indianapolis, where the committee will meet to determine the teams. That's all coming your way on ESPN Sunday at 6.30 Eastern. I keep waiting for LaSalle to hit the wall. They have not. Beatty Morris's club responding after that performance they had against Xavier with the uh, great win over St. Joe's and that tremendous finish in the last minute of play. Nelson had something in mind there, made a bad play, but then corrects the mistake by hustling and saving it. And he looked like he may have uh, strained something on his left side there. 15 on the shot clock. Nelson had it tipped away, but gets it back. He spins, looking for somebody, finds the open man. Crenshaw, unable to hit that one. Thomas went high in the air, and what have we got? It looks like a foul has been called against Victor Thomas going over the top. When a defensive back is covering Randy Moss, you have to get inside of his arms. Pretty good example right there of a cornerback getting inside the wide receiver, getting his hands on the inside, and the recipient of the free throws not able to capitalize. Well, Wilkins could not hit it. Looked like there was some separation there, though. I didn't think Thomas really made any contact. But the officials uh, made the call, and St. Joe's could not capitalize. Sazanoff is run into. And he is going to be called for the blocking foul here as Victor Thomas could not make his cut. A little bit of a different mindset officiating wise. Referees are calling it very close. And that has to favor the Explorers because the last thing that they want after playing yesterday is to go up and down the court. But they have one advantage for them. We've talked a lot about how their legs should be tired. But they did have a blowout game, had a chance to rest some of their guys right. late versus Fordham. Thomas unable to take advantage of the free throw line. It remains a four-point St. Joe's lead. Marvin O'Connor getting that last blow before the home stretch of this affair. Naeem Crenshaw. Nice feed inside, and the hook by Wilkins ball. Bill Martelli wanted the, the bucket and the foul. Six and a half on the clock. Blanks in the lane. Finds Thomas to the baseline. Pull up, jumper rattles in and out. Sazanoff had it tipped away by Bragg. But there's just too many white jerseys there, and they get the loose ball. Nelson accelerates and he lost the ball. It will belong to the LaSalle Explorers who are hanging in against their crosstown rivals from St. Joe's 59-53. Fox with 6.13 to go. If your message needs to reach George Bayard, put it where he's sure to notice. Comcast Market Link Philadelphia. One order, one tape, one invoice. At Sims, we want you to know about our website, sims.com. Visit our site for updates on weekly dividends and dollars off. Plus, we think you'll have a happy surprise. 10% off your next purchase, sims.com. Shipwreck and no animals. to the rescue! Woo! <laughs> Liquid fuel! Liquid 
stupid snack food, dude. The smoothest move. So delicious. That was drinkable. <laughs> cool. The Devil's Kingdom Kids Rule. Basketball Championship. Coverage begins March 16th on ESPN and ESPN2. An update from the SEC with a buildup for Auburn, Tennessee has been like WWF. The ball's Ron Slay said, we're going to kill Auburn. He has backed that up, knocking down the three-pointer. Volunteers looking great early. Huge lead over Auburn in Boston College now inside of four minutes away from beating Nova for a third time this year. Bell is in huge. Guys. All right, Chris, thanks very much. Not good news here in Philadelphia for the Villanova fans, but a good Philadelphia matchup here between St. Joe's and LaSalle, just over six minutes remaining in the second half. Doing blanks, a boxing move there, using his head to knock uh, Jameer Nelson a little further away. And then away from the ball, I believe. And it's going to go against Nelson, his third. Blanks has not been that third score that Speedy Morris had hoped for. Three out of nine from the field. Rasul Butler has been the man. Look at his well-developed stat line. He had 22 points, five rebounds. But if I'm St. Joe's and Phil Martelli, I would send two and three defenders at he and Thomas every time that they get the ball in scoring position. Make them pass. So far, Butler does not have an assist in this game. I want to make a correction. It was Eric Woods, number 31, that just sat down and was called for the foul. His first. Nelson uh, still with two personal fouls. Butler's second rattles in and out. Playing point guard. Letting Jameer work off the ball. Crenshaw has a lot of skills. What they're doing there is they're letting Crenshaw bring the ball up and resting Jameer Nelson. Nelson will launch the three and he hits it. Jameer Nelson. 11 points now for Nelson. Also with nine rebounds, seven assists. We're looking at a, at a triple double from Jameer Nelson. Butler, a spin move, had it slapped away, and the foul will go against Marvin O'Connor. That's the, that's the good idea defensively. They had the three defenders right there. Here's Nelson nailing that triple. Recipient of a well-run offense. Reason that they're so good, Dave, is because they spread the court so well. Not getting to the line today for the Explorers. Not like they did the last time uh, when they hit 30 out of 36. Something to do with the competition. Fordham just didn't get it done. They've had the late season collapse. Bob Hill. Was out shot at the foul line yesterday. Let's see if Butler can complete the uh, two free throws this time, and he does. 25 points for Butler. This LaSalle team has the capability of putting up the big numbers from the line. Naeem Crenshaw, that was knocked away. Good help defense there by Victor Thomas, and we got a traveling violation against Anwar, Anwar Wilson. He's saying that Crenshaw grabbed his jersey. Now his jersey's untucked right now. And on the quick inbounds play, they tried to catch the Explorers sleeping, but they reacted and got the shot block, and they get the basketball back under five minutes to go. And the upset-minded explorers, Rasul Butler, a three no good. 
A little disappointed with himself. He's been right in rhythm on almost every shot here in the second half. And you can tell when a shooter thinks he's made the shot. He thought he had that when it left his hands. O'Connor strong move, but couldn't finish. Lead pass now for Victor Thomas. Takes it all the way to the rim and finishes. Every time I think LaSalle is ready to quit, they show a little bit more. Victor Thomas now with 19. Jameer Nelson, he hit his last three. That's another one. Jameer Nelson recognizing I'm normally the setup guy, but they need me to score here. And Jameer Nelson has hit his last two threes. Huge shots at key points in the ball game. Jameer Nelson thought he had all leather there and a technical foul. Oh, not what St. Joe's needed to do there. San Filippo, George Watson, Jack Sweeney, the officiating crew. And when you have rivalry games like this, this is the kind of stuff that can happen, but this is not what, what St. Joe's needs to do. Well, there's the, it, it almost looked like there was an elbow thrown by Blanks. It wasn't vicious, wasn't malicious, and then Nelson getting targeted. It's hard to understand. It must have been words because his actions certainly didn't warrant it to me, and the significance of that when you get a technical foul, and it was on Crenshaw, it wasn't on Nelson. Right. The personal foul was on Nelson. So it was something away from the ball. Never easy to stand up there at the free throw line when there's nobody in the lane and you're out there all by yourself. So Crenshaw with the technical foul. Blanks knocking those two free throws down. Now let's talk a little strategy here. You had the technical fouls. They have bonus, so they also, let's clarify this, they should get free throws as well. They're gonna shoot two. St. Joe's well, well, is like a double. Right. All right, let's take a look and see if we can notice. Look for Crenshaw. I didn't see where Crenshaw was in the play. Now Blanks, who was followed by Nelson, gets the free right. throws. And this could turn out to be a huge turning point in this game. Yep, he shot the technicals, and, and you're right, he was the one that was fouled. So because that was uh, their 10th foul, Potentially a four-point play here for Julian Blanks. And he calmly knocks all four down. So how big now does Jameer Nelson's three-pointer look to be? He's hit his last two, and they may need some more of this from the A-10 freshman player of the year. Basketball teams often paint their logo in the middle of the court. Seemed like just a thing for 7-Up. Next time I'll get started a little sooner. Dreyfus Tax Smart Investment Solutions. The power of you, your advisor, and Dreyfus. Four identical cars four identical engines. Only one running on new Haviland, our latest triumph in Haviland motor oil technology. And what difference does that make? Not only do you get unsurpassed performance, but tests show that with new Haviland under the hood, you get better gas mileage. Haviland, add more life to your car.
ESPN's presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. And in part by Haveline. Use new Haveline motor oil technology and get improved gas mileage. Add more life to your car. The Tim McCormick statue outside the spectrum here. St. <laughs> Joe's leading 65-62. Championship week presented by 7-Up. And what about Jameer Nelson scoring in a variety of ways this afternoon? Now, a Rocky-like effort showing a variety of moves. There you see him taking his action to the post in transition. He's too quick to stop with one player. And also, my favorite delivery oh, of the entire oh, season. Wow. There's his line, one uh, rebound away from a double-double, and he's capable of getting three assists as well. 8-3 run for the Explorers in the last two minutes, six of their eight points at the free-throw line. So even though, as we had talked about, they weren't getting to the line like they did the first time these two teams played, when they have had their opportunities here in the second half, they have taken advantage. Blanks has hit all five of his. We'll see a Butler four of five. Anwar Wilson, two of two. Now the game on the line, you always look at the featured weapons on both squads. Bill Martelli, his club coming in as the number one seed, and they are 6-0 in this Atlantic 10 tournament whenever they've been the number one seed. In fact, winning the uh, tournament the previous two times they came in as number one in 1986 with Bruiser Flint as a guard. And then again in uh, 97. The first time we've seen zone defense from LaSalle. Bill Martelli usually targets a play. He's a master at that out of timeouts. Phillip inside, Sazanoff. Boy, he got away with a walk there, didn't he? But he could not finish, and two St. Joe's players are on the court. Uh, and Sazanoff fell right on Marvin O'Connor's head. He's having a hard time getting up. The official letting the play continue. Butler for three, and he hits it, and now the timeout will be called. What else can go wrong for St. Joseph's here in the last couple of minutes? <laughs> 17 points in the second half. Butler has 28, and we are tied at 65. On the offensive glass, O'Connor took the tough hit. We'll see if it affects his offensive production. And a great adjustment late by Speedy Morris. Here is Jameer Nelson. Make it three straight. Oh. I mean, he just looks like I'm supposed to make this. You know what he looks like? Remember Rashid Bay, who led them in the NCAA versus their improbable Sweet 16 run? Here is Butler right back, unable to hit. Nelson went high and got that rebound. Jameer Nelson. We've talked about him being an impact player at the offensive end, and now we have Anwar Wilson. Hey, I am here to pay homage to one of the best young point guards. If you don't love his game, you haven't been paying attention. He impacts the stat line in so many different ways. Now, notice, this is where Marvin this is where Jameer Nelson goes down. Let's see how he gets hit in the face. His own player hit him in the eye. But how'd you like that manly rebound? Somebody should tell Jameer Nelson, he's too small to go up in there with the big guys. Marvin O'Connor uh, shaking off that collision he had with Sazanoff. A lot of players getting banged around. This game's no surprise, though. You look at the rankings and the records, and you would think LaSalle would be blown out, but this is an inner city rivalry. These players all have history. They competed against each other in Biddy Ball when they were little kids, in AAU Ball in high school. Keep a close eye on Marvin O'Connor, Jameer Nelson, Rasul Butler, and Victor Thomas. Those are the four guys that will be emphasized this last couple minutes. Jameer Nelson does, doesn't just make shots. I mean, he hasn't hit the rim yet with any of those three-pointers. His free throws, I mean, just clean. Look at that. Remember, Julian Blanks outplayed him the last time they met. 
think in the back of his mind there's a little payback going on here. And that rebound that he got, you talked about the manly rebound, he now has a double-double. Blank's unable to hit the three-point chance. <laughs> if Reed doesn't grab that rebound, it was Jameer Nelson's. A little patience will serve them well in this possession. Two minutes straight up left on the clock. The LaSalle, it's just one and out. Their big dance begins here in this tournament. Crenshaw, but a three hits it. Naeem Crenshaw, who was guilty in the technical. We're at the first Union Spectrum here in Philadelphia. Championship week presented by 7-Up, the Atlantic 10 quarterfinals. An all-Philadelphia matchup and a traveling violation against Crenshaw. And he wants to control that temper. He knows it. St. Joe's against LaSalle and Phil Martelli not happy with the uh, officiating and with all the great passes that have led to baskets, the monster play of the game, not an assist. <laughs> no, Reed blew the layup, but the behind the shoulder, left hand, strong delivery. The timeout quickly called, saving the possession. And that's our monster play of the game by Jameer Nelson. I think we got a good chance of hearing Kenny Main talking about that on the uh, Blaze of the Week. I think he'll bring some sarcasm to the table. Oh, a little bit. A little bit. Speedy Morris leading with his team, a minute 33 to go. I mean, it's a, an overused cliche, but uh, considering the history recently between these two clubs, this game will not be over until the buzzer sounds. That is an overused cliche. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree with you more. Now let's take a look at the uh, the reset. Each team with a uh, full 60 second timeout. St. Joe's also has a 30. Both teams are shooting two free throws. And the winner of this game will take on the winner of UMass and St. Bonaventure. Later on today, Temple will play Dayton. And what a ball game that should be. And then later on tonight, Tim and I will have uh, Xavier against George Washington. Zone defense, supposed to close the lane. Nice play from Wilson back to Thomas. And that's the shot that had been going down. And Nelson protect the ball. He doesn't want to give it up. He wants to go to the line if they fall. Working against Quadri. And Rasheed Quadri has called for the foul. Stay with us right here on ESPN. Championship week continues as AT&T Big East Championship quarterfinals from Madison Square Garden. Seton Hall taking on number 19, Georgetown. Nelson now with 20 points to go with his 10 rebounds and eight assists. What a performance by the freshman. I mean, you got to remember, as a freshman, this is the first time he's ever been in a in a postseason tournament at the collegiate level. Yeah, he looks really worried, doesn't he? I mean, he <laughs> just scared to death. <laughs> you um, you're gonna be seeing him play on Sundays. Well, I guess that's football. <laughs> I am. Um, I really, I'm a big fan of his though. I really like the way he carries himself. I mean, he doesn't hit the rim. Everything's clean. Jameer Nelson, 21 points, 10 rebounds, eight assists. A 10-0 run. Blanks to the baseline, pulls up, and it rims out. Good play by Quadri on the inside, and he finishes. And O'Connor is fouled. One minute straight up on the clock. Marvin O'Connor did not have to go to any extremes in this game. Let's revisit that last meeting at LaSalle. He exploded offensively. Last 57 seconds, he had 18 points. His team came up one point short. After watching how that game progressed, no surprise the way this one's gone. Wilkins and Butler tie each other up. And it's gonna be St. Joe's ball on the possession arrow. And for anybody that's saying, well, you know, how's this thing going to go the last couple minutes? 
going to be a parade to the foul line for St. Joe's. I wouldn't feel real good if you're a fan of the LaSalle Explorers because this squad makes a lot of free throws, very solid. Well, we mentioned that uh, the previous two times that St. Joe's was the number one seed, they've won it. Is that an omen? I believe strongly in omens, and I'm, I'm hoping that this is an omen. Uh, we worked hard to be the regular season champions, as we did in the other two years, and uh, it would be a significant achievement if we're playing Saturday night and our players get a chance to cut down the nets. And here's what they've done. They, as we mentioned, won it in 86. The Bruiser Flint and won it again in 97. That was the first time that uh, Bill Martelli was named the A-10 Coach of the Year. And again, the number one seed, and again, Martelli, the A-10 Coach of the Year. Butler trying to find an opening, forces up a three that nearly banked in. And Jameer Nelson is grabbed here with just under 39 seconds remaining in the ball game. Well, is it is it going to be an omen? A lot of expectations, but uh, actually the way the brackets break down, St. Joe's not having to face Temple, Dayton, Xavier until potentially in the finals. They have the uh, winner of the UMass St. Bonaventure game if they hang on to this one here, which now appears very likely as they stretch it out to a 10-point lead. And in that game, if you look at the matchups, Pretty decent chance we're going to have a UMass St. Joe's game. Remember the last time these teams met in Philadelphia that UMass just bounced out to a real big first half lead. Jameer Nelson going out to the love of his teammates. St. Joe's had to scramble and have a, a just a dominant second half, but they really have a good matchup versus UMass. Uh, of course, uh, not to take anything away from the Bonnies because they beat UMass at UMass at the end of the regular season without Peter Van Passen, who will not be available for the uh, tournament as well. Now well, the final half minute of this one. Jakeem Wright, who's in the ball game for the instant offense. And he provides that with the three-pointer. How long can you wait to follow if that's what you're going to do? And finally, it is uh, committed by Dwayne Jones. The beauty of the tournament doesn't have to be your A game at this point. Bill Martelli is not going to be too concerned about the field goal percentage or assist turnover ratio. It's all about just winning the game and advancing. Bill Martelli giving uh, his St. Joe's <laughs> supporter a chance to recognize the play of the starters. And Bill Jr. getting in for the final seconds. Remember Phil Jr.'s keys, he wants to be a coach. He told us they had to contain the big two, Thomas and Butler, not bad. Also, they had to rebound the ball. I think Phil Martelli Jr. knows what he's talking about. Well, they didn't exactly contain the big two, who got their numbers, but they didn't allow anybody else to get into the offense, and they didn't over dribble. That was the other thing he talked about. Now, as, as we watch this, this game unfold here, before this thing started, Dave, you and I talked extensively about the fact that there are seven teams, potentially, that could win the A-10 tournament. Xavier, their favorite. St. Joe's is a favorite. Everybody else, Dayton, St. Bonaventure, UMass, the list goes on and on of quality teams in this conference that potentially could pull the upset. I'll give LaSalle credit as they battle right down to the end here. Three seconds uh, left in this one. 
A couple other teams that we could definitely throw in the, the mix. Temple by George Washington. Coming up next, got Championship Week presented by 7-Up. The AT&T Big East Championship quarterfinals from the Garden. The Hall versus Georgetown. Be a lot of fun. Mike barely getting some uh, playing time here at the free throw line. He'll get in the box score. And LaSalle gave St. Joe's Tim everything they could handle. More than anything else, I saw a long effort. It was quality effort on the defensive end. They protected the ball. They got the role players involved, and they, this is a team that has to be a strong favorite to advance. 82-74 the final. Don't forget, coming up tonight, we've got more Atlantic 10 quarterfinal action. George Washington taking on Xavier. Coming up next, it is Seton Hall against Georgetown from the Big East. But for now, let's go back to the studio. Chris Bauer. All right, Dave and Tim, thank you. Well, it wasn't aesthetically beautiful, but very few of St. Joseph's wins are. They move on in the, uh, in the A-10 tournament as the favorite. Well, one thing about City Series games, I coached four years at the University of Pennsylvania as an assistant. I'll tell you, any time you get any of the city schools together, like LaSalle, St. Joe, there's always wars. And we saw LaSalle beating the other night 91-90, and today you see them still hang tough, even though they played yesterday. But to me, it was Jameer Nelson. We're talking about O'Connor getting 18 points in one minute the other day. Well, in the first half, he had six points in 16 minutes, but it was Jameer Mel Nelson hitting the three threes at the end of this game that really knocked out LaSalle. LaSalle, and that was it. And then when you take a look at it, Dick, now it's move forward. Hey, I remember those Penn teams. You were there with Dick Harder, who's a great, great mind. Corky Calhoun, Robert Morris. They were unbelievable, Penn. That was way before you, Chris. But Jameer <laughs> Nelson, my <laughs> diaper dandy, man. He was unbelievable at the end of the game. And so was Marvin O'Connor. Marvin O'Connor and Mr. Nelson give him a one-two punch in the backcourt. And I love Phil Martelli's hairdo. I mean, I love that dude, baby. <laughs> it's just barber. like mine. We go to the same barber. He was my coach of the year also on my website, if you would have read it. I thought you said National Al Skinner coach was here? your coach of the no, year. No, National Coach of the Year was oh. Al Skinner. I'm talking about Atlantic 10. Oh, I, uh, I thought there was six. Uh, I've uh, just enjoyed uh, this trip confused. down the A-10 memory lane this afternoon. <laughs> We're going to go to the Big East next at Madison Square Garden. It's a monster day both here on ESPN and on ESPN 2. You can see Seton Hall, Georgetown, just a few minutes away. Then Texas is a lot like love. Buy a Whopper and get your choice.